Good morning, grade 12s. Today, I would like to work through some examples of bouncing balls. And the context we're working uh, in is projectile motion. So we've got free fall objects. A bouncing ball would be a free falling object uh, as long as it's not hitting the ground. But after hitting, after the impact, that the ground had on it, uh, it would be free fall again. So let's move on. Right, our first example, we've got uh, the position time graph for a ball that is dropped from rest. So the initial velocity is zero. I need to take note of that. Initial velocity is zero meters per second. And it falls onto, it bounces off a concrete floor. The ball strikes the floor at 9.8 meters per second at time one second. So the velocity with which it hits the ground the first time at one second, that velocity is 9.8 meters per second. And it reaches a maximum height after the bounce at 1.82 seconds. So this is the bounce occurs here after one second and it reaches the maximum height at 1.82. Let's reveal the questions. So they want us to describe the motion of the ball from zero to 1.82 seconds. Now from the parabolic shape of the graph, the graph has uniform acceleration downwards. As it moves down and then it's got uniform acceleration upwards. As it moves upwards, it's got uniform deceleration. So this is uniform acceleration downwards. And this would also be uniform acceleration downwards, but now it's bouncing up. So uniform. May I use deceleration? Upwards. Please don't be confused now because the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downwards throughout the motion while it is free falling. The ground will stop the ball at one second. At one second, the ball is stopped. And then because of the collision, there will be a change in momentum. So technically there is a force exerted upwards on the ball by the ground and that causes impulse, that is impulse, the, that causes a change in uh, momentum. Next question, sketch the velocity time graph for the motion. Now for the sake of space, you are welcome to pause the video anytime to make your notes, 
uh, for the sake of space, when I move to the next question, I think I should. No, wait, let, let me do this. I'll keep the answer and then we will just continue answering the questions. So then the second question is saying, sketch the velocity time graph for the motion of the ball. Right. So are we taking downward motion as positive motion? The object starts falling at zero velocity because it is simply dropped from a certain height. So we start here at zero and then it falls to the ground in one second. And after that, it bounces off the ground. So here we take downward motion as positive. So while the ball bounces off the ground and it moves upwards to its maximum height, this ball is moving in the negative direction. So what I should do. Is I, I should extend the velocity axis to the negative direction. And from at one second, the ball bounces upwards. So it's bouncing. I don't know what the value of that velocity is with which it bounces off the ball. The value here where it hits the ground is 9.8. But I don't know what the value is here from that from where it bounces off the ground. All I know is that these two lines, the two velocity sections of the graph, must be parallel because the gradient of a velocity time graph gives us the acceleration and the acceleration is uniform downwards, which we took as positive, our positive direction. So from one to 1.83 seconds, the ball is bouncing upwards, which is our negative direction. The next question, asks us to use the velocity time graph to determine the acceleration of the ball. Now, the gradient would be equal to the change in velocity divided by changing time and that would be 9.8 minus zero divided by one minus zero. So it is a positive 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. We could have used, no, we couldn't have used the other section of the graph because we don't have the final velocity at the maximum height. Or, sorry, we do have the final velocity at the maximum height, it would be zero, but we don't have the velocity with which it leaves the ground. The second question asks us to calculate the height from which the ball was dropped. And to calculate height from a velocity time graph, we need the area between the line and the time axis. So the height 
would be equal to the area. Now this is only for the downward motion, not for the upward motion. So it is a half times one times 9.8, which is 4.9 meters. I'm going to need more space I can feed in my gut. The velocity at, with, at which the ball leaves the floor at one second. <clears throat> now to answer this question, I need to know that this acceleration, the gradient, is also 9.8 meters per second squared. That is the gradient. I know what the time would difference be. It is 1.83 seconds. So we can calculate the velocity for number C. So the gradient would be Vf minus Vi. Sorry, the pin is playing up a bit. Vf minus Vi divided by Tf minus Ti. Vf is zero at maximum height. Vi is the one we don't know. And so this is bi with for the velocity from uh, for the upward the initial velocity for the upward motion the velocity with which it will leave the ground <clears throat> and the tf is 1.83 and the ti is 1 we do our mathematics the 9.8 meters per second squared Times, let's have a sharp moment. Where are you? <clears throat> so it is 9.8 times 0.83. That gives us 8.134. So minus the velocity is 8.134. So the velocity would be minus 8.134. And that means 8.134 meters per second upwards. Right, I think I need to clear the board here so that we can work on the next question. Good. They ask us to draw the acceleration time graph for the motion. That is definitely not a challenge in your eyes because the acceleration time graph, the acceleration is constant at 9.8 meters per second for the duration of 1.83 seconds. Sorry for my skew lines there. Right, this brings us to the end of that question. Sorry for skipping it so fast. Next question is the velocity time graph in this question represents motion of a bouncing ping pong ball that started falling from a height of 1.23 meters. Ignore the effects of friction. <clears throat> so here we go. Now we see that
button. We see that this ball starts falling at a zero velocity. Obviously, it will fall downwards, and in this case, down is in the negative direction. Falls downwards to a minus 4.9 meters per second. Then, in that at that moment in time, when it hits the ground, it bounces up and upwards is our positive direction of motion. So it, this place here is where the ball will leave the ground and it falls upwards to reach its maximum velocity where the ball stops. Then it continues to move downwards, which is our negative direction. And it will hit the floor here at a negative 2.45 meters per second velocity. And it will bounce upwards again, where it leaves the ground at a new velocity here and reaches maximum height, falls down to the ground again and bounces up again. And from the height of the gra graph, we see that the velocity of the ball changes in such a way that the kinetic energy of the ball um, is lost as it goes bouncing. Every time it bounces, it's got less kinetic energy. So the collision with the ground, in this case, is not elastic. Number one says the downward angled lines on the graph are straight lines that are parallel to each other. Why is that so? I think you know. The acceleration is uniform and it would be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Number two, how many times did the ball bounce on the surface? It bounced here, it bounced here, and it bounced there. So the answer is three times. Number three, what was the velocity of the ball when it hit the surface for the first time? Here we get, we have to read it from the graph here as negative 4.9. Please don't leave the unit out meters per second squared. Number four, what was the velocity of the ball when it bounced? The, uh, sorry, we just answered that question. Oh, no, we didn't. What was the velocity of the ball when it bounced the first time? So that is after it, that is when it leaves the ground again. That is plus 2.45 meters per second, meaning upwards. <laughs> What was the velocity number five? Oh, we've done number four. Number five, how long did the ball fall when it hit the surface the first time? Uh oh I think we need to do some calculation here. <clears throat> Let's do some calculation. So we are in number five. We've got the gradient. Now, I guess because they didn't say you need to use the graph, you could use equations of motion here. Yeah? But the gradient, I think, is 9.8 meters per second, and that would be your Vf minus your Vi divided by Tf minus Ti. I'm using the gradient method now. So it's 9.8. Ooh, ooh, this is negative 9.8. The straight line has, oops, has a negative gradient. So it's negative 9.8 is Final velocity, the velocity with which it hits the ground is minus 4.9. And what was the question again? 
for how long? Oh, um, then it, it, its initial velocity was zero. Hmm. Its initial time is zero. So I guess we can calculate the final time there. So I think this works out to negative 9.8 TF equals negative 4.9. And that means that TF is a half, 0 0.5 seconds, because negative 4.9 divided by negative 9.8 is 0 0.5. It is important to note that if your substitutions were not correct, you might end up with a negative time, then you need to correct your mistake. Question six. So this time here is negative, uh, is 0 0.5. So one, two, three, four, five blocks is 0 0.5. So that is 0 0.1, that is at 0 0.2, this is 0 0.3, this is 0 0.4, that is 0 0.6, 0 0.7. This estimated is 0 0.75, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and that would be at one second. Um, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 and 1.3. I just felt like filling in all those values. Then I can use them when I answer the next questions if needed to be. Question six, show that the ball, after it bounced the first time, reached a height of 0 0.31 meters. You will be able to calculate that if you've got the area under the graph. So area is a half times. Now this is where it comes in that we need those times because it's 0 0.75 seconds when it hits, when it reaches its maximum height after the first bounce minus the 0 0.5 seconds um, at which it bounced off the ground. And that must be multiplied by 2.45, the, the maximum height of that um, triangle, the perpendicular height of that triangle. So this is a half times 0 0.25 times 2.5. Four, five. Right, let's have a short moment. <clears throat> so it's point five times point two five times two point four five. Zero point zero point three one meters. Ah, good. That's the answer they wanted. Then number seven, they want us to draw the position time graph of the ball's motion until it bounced for a second time. So that is for a complete one second motion. Hmm. Hit the ground after 0 0.5 seconds and then again after one uh, another 0 0.5 seconds. And downward motion is negative. So upward motion is positive. Let's clear the screen. Do 
But listen, this ball is only moving above ground. So if we have the bouncing ball, the parabola would be above ground. So the ground is our zero. And it falls from a certain height. Falls from a certain height. It hits the ground at 0 0.5 seconds and it bounces off. Come on. Sorry, I'm my humble apology. Um, and it bounces off the ground to reach its maximum height after another half a second. I think that, that one there, we calculate it to be 0 0.31 seconds. And we did not calculate the initial height from where we did. What is the velocity? Uh, no, we didn't calculate, but it's possible to calculate it because it is uh, a half point five times point five times four point nine, and that gives us one point two meters if you want. That. that brings us to the end of this question. We've got one more question to do in this video. We've got a circus dog that is trained to run along a straight path of length 50 meters in the direction AB as shown in the accompanying diagram. The dog, dog starting from rest. So this dog has an initial velocity of zero. can attain a maximum speed of five meters a second in 10 seconds. So it accelerates for a time of 10 seconds. Where is my pen? So it takes 10 seconds to reach a maximum velocity of five meters per second. What am I doing? Uh, uh. And as this dog reaches five meters per second speed, 10 seconds after, it was released, a ball is fired vertically upwards from point B with a speed of 15 meters per second. At what point along this path, AB, must the dog be released so that it is capable of catching the ball just before the ball strikes the ground? So for the first 10 seconds, the ball, the dog is accelerating. Then as it reaches that point where its velocity is five, a ball is fired up. And they want to know what distance from the ball must the dog be released. So here we go. <clears throat> First of all, what distance is covered by our dog? in 10 seconds. Now here, he's accelerating 
I don't know what I don't know what his acceleration is. It's not the dog isn't free falling. I know the initial velocity, I know the final velocity, I know the time. So we can use V if squared equals V I squared plus two A delta X to calculate the distance covered by the dog in the 10 seconds. No, I can't. I can't use this equation because it does not have the time. Hmm, this is going to be tricky. Can we use, can we use delta x equals vi plus vf divided by del 2, sorry, 2 delta t? I think this is the one that will go. That's 0 plus 5 divided by 2 times 10. That gives us 25 meters. So of, of the 50 meters, half of it is taken by the dog in 10 seconds. So the dog's got another 25 meters to run if it starts running from 50 meters from the ball. But we don't know where. So now we need to calculate the time that the ball would be in the air because that will be the time that the dog will have to get the ball. So the ball, and this is where we're working with the free falling story. The ball's moving upwards at 15. When it comes back down, it would be moving at negative 15 meters per second. This is where we're moving uh, with, the, we're working with the projectile. The gravitational acceleration is negative 9.8. So let us see how long the ball will be. So the next part is how long will ball be in air? So the initial velocity is 15, the final velocity is negative 15, the acceleration is negative 9.8. What's the time? Vf equals Vi plus G delta T is the equation I would choose. Negative 15 equals 15, negative 9.8 delta T. What is delta T? It would be minus 15 minus 15, which is minus 30, divided by minus 9.8. So the ball will be in the air. Let's have a short moment again. Uh, 30 divided by 9.8 equals 3. Point zero six seconds. So from wherever this dog is, it's got 3.06 seconds to catch the ball after it ran 25 meters. Now the dog would be running at a constant velocity of five meters per second. How far will he get in zero? is 3.06 3 seconds. So it's the speed times the time, which is five times 3.06, which is, 
go away. Fifteen point three. Fifteen point three meters. So this dog will run another fifteen point three meters. So how far from the ball must the dog be released? To answer that question, the total distance that the dog must run will be 30, oh no, 40, 40.3. It's the 25 plus the 15.3 that takes us to 40.3 meters. So this dog does not run the 50, the full 50 meters. It runs from a distance 40.3 meters from the ball. Or I would say the dog would like to catch the ball just before it hits the ground. So maybe 40 meters to give it that. 30, sec 30 um, centimeters to spare. Right, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching the video. I hope it helped you in developing your problem solving skills. See you on the other side.